Hello everybody. This is a worksheet on a uh, polynomial applications uh, on word problems using perimeter and area. Uh, so this is just going to be a lesson that explains the notes that will be given to you um, in class usually. Uh, we'll begin with just a quick review of perimeter and circumference. You should know by now uh, what the perimeter of any uh, 2D shape and all that is is adding all the sides together. Now you can add all the sides together um, by being um, fancy about it by doing 4 times s for a square or you can just do like side plus side plus side plus side and you can be all fancy about it by doing it with a rectangle and you could do like 2 times the length plus 2 times width or you can do length plus width plus length plus width, it doesn't matter. Um, all you need to remember is that the perimeter is adding all of the sides, not just 2, all of the sides together. The other thing that you should remember is the uh, perimeter of a circle it is also known as a circumference. And there are two rules to it. Uh, you can use the diameter or you can use the radius. Um, so these are the two common ones. Uh, circumference is equal to pi times the diameter or circumference is equal to uh, 2 times pi times the uh, radius. So knowing these and keeping these in mind, if you don't remember these, I mean you have a memory aid, uh, use it and put them on. Uh, but you should by now be comfortable with knowing the rules on calculating uh, the perimeter of any type of shape, 2D shape anyway. So over here I have our first example. Uh, the sophomore class is working on a float for the homecoming parade. They need to put a fringe around the perimeter of a rectangular trailer. If the length is six feet longer than the width, what is the equation that represents how long the fringe needs to be? Um, in this case it says equation, but we're actually looking for an expression because we are not really going to be using, um, we're not going to be solving for x or w or l or whatever. Uh, we're just going to be writing out a, an expression for the perimeter. So if I zoom in over here, um, you'll see that the picture is drawn for you. If it's not, draw the picture. Draw the rectangle. It really cannot hurt you. So over here, um, we have the width because we don't know what it is, but we know that the length is 6 feet longer than the width, so I have W plus 6. Now where a lot of people tend to um, get stuck is instead of doing the perimeter as length plus length plus width plus width, for some reason they just do length plus width. Do not get confused with area. You have to add all four sides. Um, the question has 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, or if you're more comfortable, you can do w plus 6 plus w plus 6 plus w plus w. In brackets or not, it doesn't matter. We have no minuses happening, so you could keep it as no brackets, or if you would prefer, put them in brackets. And in the end, when we simplify, we get that the perimeter, um, the expression for the perimeter is 4w plus 12. So that's the first example. On the next page, we have a second example. Um, and in this case, they need to put a fringe around the perimeter again. But even though the length is 6 feet longer than the width, I tell you um, that it is uh, 62, or sorry, 52 feet. Right? So here it says, if 52 feet of trim is used, what is the length and width of the trailer? So I'm actually asking for the actual length and the actual width given the total perimeter is 52. So we go with the same thing that we had the last um, page, but in this case I give you uh, the number 52. So my 4w plus 12 is not just equal to the perimeter now, it's equal to 52 specifically. And at this point you have a very simple um, equation uh, where you would subtract 12 on both sides sorry, it's so blurry, you would subtract 12 on both sides, and then you would divide by 4, and then you would get that the width was 10 feet. But the question is asking you for what is the length and the width of the trailer. So you know what the width is, and you know that the length is 6 feet longer. So your length is then 10 plus 6, which is just 16 feet. And that's it for equations in perimeter. Um, another example is using a triangle. So in this case, your triangle obviously has three sides. And to find the perimeter, you have to just add all the sides together. Doesn't matter what your base is, doesn't matter what your height is. Um, when you do that, again, you can put brackets around them. I don't care. Um, but it's not important because we have no real minusing of the polynomials. They're all being added together. So it doesn't really matter. If we look here and see what our like terms are, we have um, x, x, and x, and then we also have just regular um, numbers, 5, 1, and negative 2, and together we get that our expression for the perimeter is 6x plus 4. 
Um, and finally, I'm going to give you an example with a circle. A circular driveway has an unknown radius of x feet. If the radius was increased by 5 feet, write an expression that would represent the new circumference. So over here, I give you the general rule for the um, circumference of a circle. Um, and I know that the radius is being increased by 5. So my radius, we'll call it x, and it's being increased by 5, so it's x plus 5. So in this case, instead of 2 pi r, it's going to be 2 pi x plus 5, because this here is um, our radius. Um, and so uh, simplifying, what they did is they brought in their 2 pi and they brought in distributing. If you would rather, 2 times pi is um, just uh, 6.28 approximately, and 10 times pi would be approximately 31.4. If you did this, that would have just been fine as well. Um, so this page here actually has a few practice problems, which will probably be assigned um, in class, but that is it for perimeter. So now let's go on to area. Here are five shapes that you would need to know the area of comfortably. The first shape is a triangle, then you have a square, you have a rectangle, a trapezoid, and then you have a circle. Um, now some of these um, formulas you may not be familiar with um, because they take out the fraction portion of it. But this is the same thing as base times height divided by 2. And this is the same thing as big base plus little base times height divided by 2. Okay, so don't be worried, don't be confused, it's the same thing. So these are five rules that you should be able to use and are comfortable using. Uh, and then we're going to uh, apply them in some of the questions, uh, in some of the examples that we will be doing um, right now. Um, for example number one, I need to know what the expression that represents the area of the trapezoid is. So here is a trapezoid. Um, this is your big base, this is your little base, and this is your height. And knowing that, you have a rule b plus b height over uh, 2. That's the rule. Okay. So over here they have it written where they have the half outside, which is fine. I mean, you, you don't need to have the half outside. It could just be get rid of this divided by 2. This is your um, big base, and this is your little base. So big base plus little base divided by 2. And so they just simplify inside with um, 3x uh, plus x is 4x. And then they do um, 8 plus 2, which is 10. And this on the outside here is simply your height. So we keep the height outside. And we simplify further by bringing in our x. And we get 4x squared plus 10 divided by 2. And we do division of polynomials by a monomial. And you get 2x squared plus 5x as your expression for the area of this trapezoid. Let's look at some more examples. A square has an unknown side length of x. A rectangle has a side length that is 4 feet longer than the square and a width that is 2 feet shorter than the square. The areas of both the square and the rectangle are equal. Now this is very important. Find the side length of the square, so find x. So it's drawn for you here. And if it's not, I suggest you do it. You draw it. So this here is your square, right? Everybody should know that this is your square. And this is your rectangle. And going by what the question says, each side length of this square is x. The length of your rectangle is 4 more than your um, square. And the width of your rectangle is 2 less than that of your square. So we're just writing it out this way. The next thing that they tell us is that the area of the rectangle, so area of rec, is equal to area of square. So we're going to have a nice little equation here, where this here is the area of our rectangle, and this here is the area of our square. And over here, we are going to have to FOIL. And when we FOIL, we get x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. And simplifying our 4x minus 2x, we get 2x. Now, your job is to solve 4x. You need to know what the side length of the square is. Um, luckily, over here, our x squareds cancel out. So we are left with 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. We add 8 on both sides, and then we divide by 2. And we have that 
x, or our side length for the square, is 4 feet. So we have just solved this answer. And now let's talk about um, circles. Uh, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. There is no use for diameter in area of a square, uh, area of a circle, sorry. There is no use for diameter. We only care about the radius. The diameter, though, of a circular fountain is 10 feet. City engineers want to build a sidewalk around the fountain that is x feet wide. Write an expression that shows the total area taken up by the fountain plus the sidewalk. So fountain and the sidewalk. Area of fountain and the sidewalk. Again, picture is drawn for you, and if it's not, you should be able to draw this. Here we have our um, original fountain. We'll highlight it here in blue so that it represents water. And on the outside, we have a, a sidewalk. But remember, for area, we really only care about radius. So it's cool that they give us the diameter, but we need to know that radius is equal to 5. And not only that, but we're adding the x of the sidewalk to the radius, so the whole radius is 5 plus x. So over here, instead of pi r squared, we are going to have pi 5 plus x squared. Pausing here for a second, this you should recognize as a method of, again, foiling. You got an addition inside the brackets and a, a, a squared on the outside. You foil. When you foil, you get 25 plus 10x plus x squared. And what they did in this example is they just distributed the pi in. Um, you could have changed it into 3.14. Um, it really does not bother me. This page here has some examples for you to do, which will, again, probably be assigned in class. And finally, we're going to talk about the area of more than one type of shape, so the area of combined shapes. Um, over here, you'll notice that we have two different shapes. We have this shape here, which is a rectangle, but then we also have a big rectangle here on the outside. Um, usually what they're going to ask you for is a piece of that um, a whole rectangle. A rectangular parking lot has a small rectangular area in one corner that needs to be repaired in yellow. The dimensions are shown in the drawing. What is the area of the parking lot that does not need repair, so the blue? Um, so in this case they tell you that what you're essentially going to have to do is you're going to have to do area of the big rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle. Uh, so the area of the big rectangle is 13x times 7x and the area of the small rectangle is x times 2x. So we write it out here. Now again, there is subtraction happening, so if you would like, I would put these in brackets to be on the safe side. Um, simplifying, we get 91x squared minus 2x squared, and these are like terms, and 91 minus 2 is 89, and you keep the x squared. So this is the um, expression for the blue area of the um, parking lot. Down here, we have the same idea. Uh, it might be hard to see here, so this is supposed to be um, 4x, and I'll do it in yellow so that you can see 4x. Um, over here, the small area represented by the small rectangle is removed. What is the remaining area or the shaded portion? Um, oh, and here, sorry, you also have um, x plus 1 that you may not be able to see on your page. Uh, so we basically have to do large minus um, small to give us the shaded area. So if you see here, the large area has dimensions 11x and 6x plus 2, and the small one has 4x and x plus 1 as its dimensions. So all we're going to do is we're going to subtract. Again, be on the safe side and keep your brackets. So in this case, you're going to get 66. Oh, I'll write that in a different color so that you can see it. 66x squared um, plus 22x um, minus, and then we're going to put in brackets 4x squared um, plus 4x. And that's when we distribute our negative inside. And we get negative 4x squared minus 4x. And then we add and subtract our like terms, which you should be very comfortable doing by now. So these are like terms, and then these are like terms. And we get 66, sorry, 62x squared uh, plus 18x is our um, example, or is our answer. And that's it for um, usually combining uh, different types of rectangles. 
Um, and uh, you should, again, be very comfortable remembering what the area of a rectangle, a square, a triangle, a trapezoid, and a circle are. And essentially, these are the types of questions that you will be getting based on um, uh, these types of polynomials and these types of shapes.